Hello again everyone! You're watching a special edition of Lady Arcaders Attract Mode featuring crafts that are going to be featured as prizes in the upcoming Frost Fatales event. That event will be an all week long speedrunning event raising money for the Mal or for Malala Fund starting on Sunday, February 26th and going through Saturday, March 4th. Up next today... I'm so excited about this one. We have a Triforce wall hanging that is going to be being crafted by our very own Critique Quartz. Critique, whenever you're ready. Hi, it's weird being on the other side of that countdown, but I am here and I'm so excited to share this with you guys. Everybody, I just started quilting about maybe two years ago. Actually, a little bit more than that now that I think about it. It was kind of the something I started uh, as a senior in college. We got a crafting space and so it was really nice to be able to go to the library and like when my insomnia was really bad just hang out and uh work on some stuff to like clear my mind and kind of like get back in the mood to go back to class um and so here i am i'm going to show you guys my process and uh all of the tools and various instruments i use uh so let's get started um but first uh i have a lovely lovely commentator with me if you would like to introduce yourself go ahead I would like to introduce myself, Critique. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's me, Happy Bear. Uh, some of you have probably heard me before. Um, those who haven't, uh, then you're just going to have a treat today, I guess. Um, I am pumped to be Critique's uh, commentator today and to be finishing this amazing Lady Arcaders crafting showcase. This is something I've never seen done before in any kind of like uh, uh, feminine gaming space and um this is getting me pumped for frost uh fatales so yeah critique let's uh, let's get this going uh i will say if the timer hasn't started yet you can go ahead and start it i'm gonna do some explanations and i think that should definitely be counted as time so um i'll go ahead go ahead and get on that but first up the things you need to get started quilting really you don't need this nice sewing machine you just need some needle and thread and cloth but there are some items that help you along the way. Um, for example, a nice pair of cloth scissors. These are, uh, I believe, ginger. Um, they come with their nice sheath. They actually come with a cleaning cloth too. Um, don't ever use them on paper or anything like tacky, like uh, a vinyl that uh, the vinyl stickers or um, like tape that'll ruin them and it'll make them like not capable of being used on cloth. It'll gum up and uh, tear the cloth. Um, this is another cutting instrument. It is a rot rotary cutter. Um, and this button here actually is a guard. Um, you can bring the guard down. And this edge right here is very sharp. So you never want to leave those out. Um, make sure the guard is up. Um, this is a quilting ruler and this is a cutting mat. Um, I will be showing you how to use them later. Um, of course, some thread, um, a bobbin, uh, and this is actually a template rather than a ruler. Um, there are pieces of cloth you can buy. Um, they are called jelly rolls. They're like 44 pieces of like fabric. Uh, that are two and a half inches wide and they're like three feet long and they're wrapped up um, into like a roll and this is made specifically for cutting them. Um, I bought it because it helps me get my angles correct um, and we've mentioned a few times that I'm going to be making a Triforce wall hanging um, and in order to do that I took some pieces of cloth and I sewed them together um, and kind of like a hazapper or has Oh, what's the word? Kind of just like piecing together scraps um, in order to make a more like scrappy is the way quilters call it uh, shape. And I've cut six or three rectangles uh, to be the three pieces of the Triforce. And now I have to work on the backing, which is actually what you see, this long piece of cloth. Um, this is going to be making up a good portion of the backing, if not all of it. Um, this is, again, another technique that's used with jelly rolls. Um, you take and you sew them together end by end, like this. Um, and then you sew 
you take that long strip, you fold it in half, and you sew it end to end all the way down. And so, um, a little bit warning here, this sewing machine uh, is new. It still makes some noise, so we'll see how that works out, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead with that. So yeah, uh, Char, uh, Happy Bear, are you guys excited for Frost Fatales? Oh, you know it. I am so, so pumped for Frost Fatales. Um, there's gonna be so many fun runs. I, uh, you know, I'm actually really excited about the Tiny Tina's Wonderlands run that's gonna be on Sunday. Um, I know that Kagome has worked really hard on preparing an amazing and entertaining run. I think that one's gonna be really fun. Char, are there any runs you're looking forward to? <laughs> Yeah, I was talking earlier today about Pokemon Coliseum, and one of the really cool things is I believe you're actually hosting for that one, so I that's going to be really cool. I'm very excited. I actually took the day off of work because I, um, oh. it's, a, it's kind of a long hosting shift. It's four hours for one game, which is a little bit on the longer it's side. Long end. That is, I believe, the longest shift in the event, and I was so torn on splitting it, but... Yeah. Great game! I'm excited! <laughs> uh, Pokemon Coliseum is one of my favorite games. I actually have my original GameCube copy around here somewhere uh, with the special wow. disc that has like Jirachi on it. Um, but yeah, I am so excited for that. So, real quick, uh, I'm gonna show everybody something. This is just a straight edge, um, that's why I'm using it. Uh, and this is the rotary cutter. You place. Let me make sure that's in view. Um, you place the roadie cutter edge along the edge of the ruler and you just push across and it cuts the fabric. But you see it didn't cut clean cleanly here, which means that this blade is old and needs to be replaced, um, which is fine. Uh, I can show you how to replace that. You just screw off the back and then you take off the top. And you have to be careful because even though it is old and dull, it can still cut you, and we don't want that. So, taking that off carefully, and we're gonna open up a new box, or a new set. If it'll let me. All right. Um, and I actually have a tin that I store these in that is up above me. Um, I'll go grab that in a little bit, but you open this up, you fight the plastic, except for be careful doing it. Um, plastic is always such a final boss when you're trying to unpackage something. No. Boy, isn't that the truth. I was trying to open some batteries the other day, and it's like trying to get into Fort Knox. I hated it. Right? Yeah. Uh, you just place that on the screw. And then... Uh, this lines up kind of funny. There's actually a flat end. So just rotate it until it's there. And then screw this back on. And now that's done, we are going to close that and put that down. We will pick this up, put it in the old packaging, and throw it away. So we are safe. No one has been harmed so far in the making of this, and I will be upset if my showcase is the one that causes someone to be hurt. So, safety first when you're crafting, everyone. So again, that's a much cleaner cut. And now, I have a very long strip of fabric that is actually one and a half inches wide, because every time you sew a seam in quilting, you use a half inch seam allowance, and so you lose half inches, or a half inch on each piece. I'm sorry, not a half inch, a quarter inch on each piece of fabric that you sew. And so now we have this. And now I did mention earlier that I have this template here. I also have a very piece, a very pretty piece of fabric in which to use with the template. Here we go. I love this fabric. I think it's so pretty. I don't Whoa. know how well it's coming up on stream, but it's like oh, a wow. light blue. Um, and there is gold, of course. Um, this is actually scrap pieces of fabric built from or left over from this long strip 
So um, it doesn't really matter how much I cut off or how much is like wasted because it's all gonna go in my scrap bag anyways. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm just gonna line it up against the edge. Mm. Hmm. Trying to decide which edge. Uh, I need to make sure that's on camera. that's better um, so the good thing about quilting is while the fabric is expensive um, people use like all of the little odds and ends of it so if for some reason you find a fabric you really really love and then you use a lot of it during a project you can actually just store those scraps and stuff in your stash and use them as like filler uh, during another project and so there's there's some waste depending on the type of project you're going for but there's actually relatively little um, I'm never worried about throwing out half of my fabric because even if I miscut something I can save it for later um, and use it for something else speaking of which actually of scraps and stashes this is my scrap bag <laughs> um, <laughs> That's it's awesome. not it's not too bad, um, but again, I have been quilting for only uh, about two years now, so it's, it's not not great. I could probably go through it and uh, use a little bit more of it in projects and stuff, um, as opposed to buying more fabric and trying to make things look scrappy. Um, and so now what I need to do is I have the three pieces of the Triforce, um, and Happy Bear and Char, if you guys want to pick which one is which, that is fine. I cannot, for the life of me, remember which one on the Triforce is power, wisdom, and courage. But if you tell me, I'll believe you. <laughs> yeah, that was a pop quiz I did not study for. I would pick based on the colors, but I do not know what the official configuration is. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I missed that BuzzFeed quiz in high school. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chat, if any of you know the answer on which Triforce piece is which, please feel free to share with the class. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, so I have this centerpiece now, and I need to build out, it looks like um, an inch and a half maybe, or maybe just an inch. Um, in fact, it probably would be better if I lined these up with the piece of fat, or with the ruler. I'm, or the... This is a self-healing cutting mat, in case you didn't know that, um, and I hadn't said anything. Um, if I line these up more with it, so that one of them, at least, is on one of the lines, and the others aren't, hmm, this isn't right. I will say, we did get an answer coming through from chat from P. Cole that the top is power, the bottom left is wisdom, and the bottom right is courage. Ah, okay. That's interesting. I did not know that. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Paul. Huh. Interesting. All right. So it looks like I have maybe an inch and a half, or maybe just an inch between the end of this and the start of this. And remember, I'm going to lose um, a quarter inch on each piece of fabric. So a quarter inch here, a quarter inch here, that's half. So probably an inch and a half of filling uh, between the two. And so that's what this long piece of fabric is for. Um, I picked out a bunch of scrap fabric, uh, mostly things that have a black color palette. Um, some of them are a little bit more blue because for some reason I always associate Link with, uh, or Legend of Zelda with blue more than green. Um, and you can- Interesting. Yeah. That uh, is interesting. It works though, like the latest game was Blue Link, so you're just maybe ahead of the curve, maybe predicting the future a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think the real reason is because the the shield is blue, you know? Oh, that's a really good point. Alright, so back to the sewing machine. We are going to cut on, or not cut, we're going to sew on a bias, um, and that means we're not sewing a straight line against this seam, or against this edge, because I have in my head an idea of the Triforce, like, just kind of, or the, the triangle, uh, kind of having a tilted effect, which, if this works out, great. If not, I have enough fabric to cut 
uh, some more and start again doing straight lines. So we're going to do one row of this, see what it looks like, and then decide. So yeah. Oops. I forgot. So if, for those of you who don't know, if you are wondering how I know what a half, cent half inch is, my needle is at the center of my sewing machine right here. Actually, it'll probably be easier. I was definitely I'm... about to ask how you knew how far apart everything was. Yeah, instead of using my finger for this, um, especially with my foot near the pedal, which you should not have your foot on your pedal if you are anywhere near your needle, but um, this part right here is where my needle is. It's straight down. I'm using a straight stitch. Um, and there's this thing on the sewing machine called the, the foot pedal or the foot. Um, and it on my sewing machine has several uh, like grid lines or rulers on the side that tell you how far away you are from the needle or the center of the pedal. Um, so I know on my sewing machine, the needle's in the middle. That means the hat or the quarter inch mark is right here along the edge of the pedal. And so whenever I'm sewing long things, I'll brace my hand along the side of the pedal and I'll make sure to keep an eye as the feed dogs, which are these little claw things down here, pull the fabric to try and straighten it out, pull or push whatever way I need to, um, to try and keep that seam as even as possible. One other thing, this is a do as I say and not as I do thing, is if you are ever quilting for some reason, uh, you need to iron your fabric after you've sewn a seam. Um, and there's several reasons why for that, but the most important is it makes your fabric flat. If your fabric isn't flat, it's harder to sew and it's just kind of like, the finished product doesn't look as polished. Um, that being said, I know what I'm doing, I promise. Um, and I'm fairly sure that I have, this vision will work out. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Yeah, I, I believe, believe critique. I believe. <laughs> so I'll say, I definitely believe you know what you're doing. I got my first sewing machine at the end of last year to work on a project, and I have already learned many things that I've done incorrectly with that sewing machine since starting. So I'm excited to try again after watching the showcase. All right. So that's lined up. Let's go ahead and start. All right, so you see the fabric punched up there? Uh, that is because I did not pull out my uh, tails. Um, whenever you're starting a piece, uh, you wanna pull them out about six inches. I pull them a little further because I'm bad at keeping track of them. Um, so yeah. Just keep that mi that in mind whenever you're working on something. So I'm pretty happy with how even this seam is. It's a little wonky because this got pulled, but I don't think it's enough to mess up the final design. So I'm going to take this square ruler. People have opinions about these rulers. Um, very strong opinions. If you ever ask any quilter what type of ruler that you're using, uh, expect to get uh, get lectured on it. I, however, was lucky enough to uh, have a quilt shop nearby going out of business, which is awful and stinks because now I have to drive 40 minutes to go get quilting supplies, but I was able to buy a few materials pretty cheap. Um, I know that cost prohibitive, uh, this is a hobby that can be cost prohibitive because it feels like you need all these fancy tools and stuff um, when you first join or first get started. Um, really, you don't. If you have some thread and a needle, you're fine. <laughs> um, a, pair, a pair of scissors. Um, but I have actually seen people take fabric and rip it down the weft of the weave uh, in order to quilt and things. Um, 
it's not very good for the fabric, but it if it works, it works. Um, also, any longtime sewers out there probably notice I'm not back stitching before I begin anything, and I'm not back stitching afterwards. There's a reason for that. Um, as quilters, we kind of just don't care. <laughs> we have so many seams, it actually just saves us a lot of time and effort in the long run. I'm gonna cut this with some scissors because I don't think I need a super straight edge for that. Um, and it saves us time and thread in the long run to not go back and forth and do those because they are time consuming. If I did a back stitch on all of these pieces, I would still be doing back stitches. Um, so yeah. And for anyone who may not be super into sewing, when you say back stitch, what is that? What does that do for the project? That's a great question, Char. Uh, let me grab my scrap piece of fabric. This was um, a mock-up of what I was planning on doing. Um, I think I'm going to change the final shape, but that's fine. We can use it to sew. So when you start sewing a seam, uh, typically when you are making garments or clothing um, or even purses or bags or anything made out of fabric, anything that you want to hold together for a long time, you go ahead and you stitch one, two, three, and then you... One second. This is a new sewing machine, so I have to remember where it is. I believe it's here. Uh, so you press your backstitch button, and it actually just goes back over the stitches you've done. So that kind of locks your thread in place. Um, if I was hand stitching, I would do three back stitches over the same stitch. Um, you can't really do that with sewing machines. You can, but it's a little tedious. Um, and that's just like, there's so much friction there from the thread like rubbing against itself. It locks the thread in place and you don't have to worry about that seam coming undone at the end. Uh, the seam, if it does break, it'll do it uh, along the middle where there's more t like stress. So yeah, that's back stitching. Oh. That's cool. Do you have to like tie a knot when you do that then or just the friction itself is enough? You just cut the thread and move on. The friction itself is enough. You just cut the thread and move on. Um, you also do it at the end when you're finishing a seam as well. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, this is so educational. Yeah. So uh, what do you get a sewing machine for? What are you trying to get started? <laughs> I was working on a cosplay of the Blue Badger from Ace Attorney, which was an absolute adventure. And I'm very glad I got a sewing machine because before when I've done cosplay, I've hand stitched stuff and it takes forever. And wow, sewing machines are just so fast. They and this are. one I had to like <laughs> replace the center of a onesie with a different thing. I had to sew like a helmet thing together out of fabric. So I only barely finished in time there's no way i would have done it without at least basic sewing machine skills so i'm very very glad my grandma taught me like the most straightforward things about it so i could pick it up years later and make that happen <laughs> yeah um i know that like i don't think this is a thing anymore like they used to teach my mom always says this whenever i get the sewing machine out so like it's a constant like fight um whenever i uh <laughs> She's always like, they used to teach us how to sew in home ec, and they, they don't do that anymore. And I'm like, I think that's because they've cut costs, mom. Yeah. I think my brother actually took home ec in high school and learned how to sew. So he was actually much better than I was with the sewing machine. Uh, might still be. We've never done it. I don't think there's like a sewing machine competition, but my brother and I are pretty competitive. So I'm sure I could convince him to do one if I challenged him annoyingly enough. I don't know that I'd work that, so maybe I won't do that. <laughs> I mean, just a little bit of, like, sibling rivalry is always great. <laughs> we very much both play video games, and when we go to events, uh, we kind of keep track of who's won each game, air quotes. If it's not a competition game, we still know who finished the demo first. <laughs> we get pretty into it. Oh gosh, happy there, though. I wanted to come over to you. Like, What's your sewing history like? Is that something you tried before? Is that something that you haven't done yet? Like, where are you at in this sewing adventure? You know, I have never, ever, ever done anything with sewing. I am a complete sewing newbie, so I'm just sitting here so impressed by these wonderful sewing skills that I'm seeing. Um, I did try the adventure of crocheting once upon a time. Uh, my friend Christy tried to teach me, and I 
I uh, made a very nice purple thing. It was about three inches long and one inch wide. And then Christy looked at it and was like, yeah, you did great. And then <laughs> she never she never did another crocheting session with me again. So I'm oh. definitely not a crafty person by any stretch of the imagination. But I am very impressed by what I'm seeing on screen right now. This is super fun. We have to pivot. That's OK. <laughs> So the the angles of it were not working out the way I wanted, and the seams are too thin. Uh, you can tell because right here it has frayed, and right here uh, it's there's a gap. That's my fault because I didn't check the uh, seam allowance beforehand. Uh, I tried to sew too close along this edge. That's all right. I have a second piece already cut out, and we can just go ahead from there. Alright. I noticed that we opened the sewing machine at some point while switching over. I was actually looking for my seam ripper. Um, it doesn't seem to be inside my sewing machine, but um, a lot of new sewing machines have, uh, like... Alright, let me explain this I function can't even get a, Sorry, I can't even get a dress with pockets, and you're telling me your sewing machine has pockets? I'm jealous. I know. Well, clearly the answer is use that new sewing machine to make a dress with pockets. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, but yeah, so this is actually made for any uh, tight seams or anything that has already been sewn one way and you need to like physically wrap it around the machine to sew. Um, so you can fit like, uh, if you're sewing a zipper on like a pencil case or something, you can fit that over the sewing machine and the seam can fit here and you can just rotate the piece as you are sewing. Um, that being said, this is a storage container. <laughs> um, like I said, brand new sewing machine. It has several different feet in it. Um, this is, I think a zipper foot. I'm not sure, I've never had to use one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think they're feet that go on the sewing machine to like help guide yeah. the fabric, right? These are not actual human toes or anything. I mean, I would be very surprised if somebody was showing off human toes on a stream <laughs> like this, just unabashedly, but yeah, they go on the sewing machine. Um, awesome. This is, I actually don't know what the, oh, uh, this goes, you can't see it right now, but I, I'm sorry, tech, I'm moving things around. Uh, I'll move them back. This is actually another uh, connector for your, bobbin i'm gonna say this is bobbin the thread it's not um so you can actually connect it here actually i think this one specifically goes like on a piece over here towards the side of the sewing machine um and that's just technically thread is wrapped several different ways and depending on which way it's wrapped on the spool depends on the way you want to pull it off of the spool because one way causes too much tension and then the other way causes less tension. So sometimes you want to pull the spool horizontally and sometimes you want to pull the spool vertically. Um, so that's dependent. Um, these are extra needles. Uh, let me see. What else is in here? Ah. This is a lint cleaner because... And this is a sewing machine key. There's this screw here and here towards the back that you have to take off to clean off the the lint because you're using thread and uh, whenever you use thread, it builds up. Um, there's also extra bobbins, which are the things down here that hold the bottom thread. Yeah, lots of cool nifty stuff in there that hopefully we won't see too much of because those are the... <laughs> Uh oh, something has gone wrong, Thread. Got Thanks. it. Well, thank Critique, you for the tour. Critique, I do just want to let you know that you have inspired chat to use their toes to sew. So, uh, that's. Oh um, gosh. Chat, chat, safety, please. Please. <laughs> chat, please don't use your feet to sew. <laughs> it's, it's too late. The feet sewing revelation, or is revolution, is being sewn right now. So hilarious, I'm like the least feet related sewing person. When I got my sewing machine, I've got one that just has a little knob that you turn instead of an actual foot pedal because the foot pedal scares me. I love the foot pedals. I can't That's... do it. It's too, too much. That's fair. I understand that. Um, 
<laughs> when I was started looking for a new machine, my mom's like, because my previous machine uh, was one that I had inherited from her and she had had before I was born. Um, and my mom was like, you have to get one with a foot pedal. So if I borrow it, I can feel like I'm like stomping <laughs> in front of a car. I was like, okay, mom. It just gets, anyone who hasn't seen a sewing machine like up close before like this, um, there actually is a, I assume you're using a foot pedal, correct? I am, yes. Yeah. So for anyone... uh, it's over here. The connection uh, is separate from the mm -hmm. power. So if you think about it, there is just like actually a pedal <laughs> that you can use with your foot and it controls the speed at which things are moving forward. So you can see we're sort of going faster, slower as we're getting things lined up. Um, your foot pedal is what's actually controlling that speed and pacing. So there's there's multiple limbs at work, one of which you can't even see, but it's helping. It's a full body exercise. Um, I will also say that uh, the hand knob is existent on all sewing machines. So if for some reason you're doing some delicate work, you only need to go two or three stitches, you can actually just turn the knob and the sewing machine will only do a few stitches. Um, it's a manual, like, crank. Yeah. Katika, I think for next year's uh, Frosty Tales Crafting Day, I want to see you sewing upside down, where you are sewing with your feet and using the foot pedal with your hands. I think that would be really impressive and, you know, kind of symbolic of how the Lady Arcaders kind of like to shake things up, you know? That would be incredibly impressive, but unfortunately, I don't have the manual dexterity in order to do that, Happy Bear. Well, we need to find you some automatic dexterity then. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get this lined up. Again. I don't think that's how dexterity works, but I don't think I can prove you wrong either. <laughs> you know, I don't know I... enough about dexterity in order to tell you no. <laughs> It's, you know, everything I know about dexterity comes from Dungeons and Dragons, so um, take, take that for what you will. My real life dex score, dex, dex score, not my Pokemon dex score, is like maybe three <laughs> in D&D <laughs> &D terms. Like, I don't know what my modifier is, but it's not high. <laughs> <laughs> video games IRL, though. I guess that one's not such a video game, it's just a tabletop game. But games IRL, that's kind of the theme of today's stream, though, right? Bringing the games into the real-life 3D world. Mm hmm I do appreciate three, uh, three saying that earlier. It was very enlightening, I will say. I appreciate the, the different ways we view crafts. Um, everybody has their own ways. Um... I don't know how many people saw it earlier, but JPEG's Aquamarine, like, uh, sorry, not Aquamarine, Aqua's Wayfinder pendant, I was host for, and that was a lovely time, but like, you don't see how much effort goes into these crafts until like, you are physically doing them. Um, I think I'm gonna have to get my seam ripper out now. <laughs> I keep messing up on this. <laughs> Well, it's tricky and it's live. I'm excited though to see this like triangle coming together. I was not at all sure how you're going to turn this incredibly long strip of fabric into anything resembling a Triforce, but this is fascinating. Okay. We're going with the backup of the backup. <laughs> um, I think that this might be too, too much, right? So I'm not going to use this one. Solutions. You have to make it up on the fly, everyone. And sometimes things don't work out the way you want to. That is okay. That you know, is okay. we are witnessing in real time some alternate routing being done by this crafting speedrunner. I'm definitely not a crafting speedrunner. I take so long to work on projects. It's actually... Actually silly. I had, um... My first, my most recent project that I actually finished, um, just to give you some sort of like idea, uh, I made my brother a quilt as a wedding gift. It was a queen, si queen size quilt, um, so rather large. 
Um, it took me from November of last year to, oh goodness, uh, January? No. They got married in August. August of this year, and I finished on his birthday. Or no, on his wedding day. That's the level we're working at right now, okay? <laughs> That's awesome, though. It was... It was a lot of work. It got done. I can't complain. Crafting projects are one of those things that always take longer than you think they will. Because you think about the, the base work required, and then you forget a couple details, so that adds time. And then you think about the first backup plan, but you rarely get to the point where you actually account for the second backup plan in the time. And it's surprisingly frequent that you get to backup plan 2, 3, 4, sometimes 17. <laughs> like, right. oh, it's So my mistake on the last one is actually I didn't account for the fact that when I sew the third side, I need extra left over to like sew oh. onto. And okay. so that's something that I have consistently been forgetting. So now that I know to look out for it, I am going to leave a hefty extra seam allowance to keep going. And we are going to go through these as quick as we can because I would like to make some progress. You and... know, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Happy Bear. I, I was just going to say, sometimes speedruns can still be very long. For instance, the 100% speedrun for Bait and Kaidos Eternal Wings in the Lost Ocean <laughs> is 337 hours and 55 minutes. I also want to read you uh, part of what the uh, world record holder submitted as the commentary for the speedrun. Why do you need Bane Kaido's 100% speedrun? That continue to change and grow and exceed their limits, moving toward eternal possibilities that we have yet to see. Is it hope or doom? Chat, that's what I want to ask you right now. Is it hope or doom? What we're doing right now. Are you moving towards hope or doom? You better watch it. Anyway, that's all. Thank you, I appreciate that. That was lovely. <laughs> Yeah, just a casual reminder. Some things don't work out the way you're expecting to, and I think crafting is very good at teaching us that. <laughs> you do have to uh, often come up with solutions you weren't expecting. There's a lot of creative thinking involved. It's a good process. Although now that we're talking about speedrunning, I just keep looking at the schedule for Fatals. For anyone who may be joining us late, Ross Fatals is coming up at the end of the month, and what you're seeing today is a showcase of different potential prizes that are going to be submitted for the event. So if these things look cool, you're thinking, hey, it'd be awesome to win one of those, make sure you mark your calendar for February 26th through the end of that week, and you might be able to donate and have a chance at winning, which is really exciting. And I also want to, to call out, I don't know if we mentioned this, but Happy Bear, I believe you actually are doing a speedrun in the event as well? Oh, shucks. I didn't think anyone was going to mention that. Now I'm blushing. But uh, yes, <laughs> Char, I, I am doing the um, the Captain Toad Treasure Tracker All Levels New Game Plus uh, run, and I'm actually second uh, in the event. So um, I get to follow up at Luigi's Mansion 100%, which will be fun. So I'm really going to work hard to keep that fun energy going and to get everyone psyched up and, and excited for what we're doing. It's it's going to be a really fun time, so I hope everyone watches. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, tell us what you think about Captain Toad. I know you are a known Captain Toad fan, Happy Bear. I, I am a known Captain Toad fan, absolutely. I started speedrunning Captain Toad um, two years ago, actually, uh, January 2021. I was just looking for a fun, cozy game to speedrun. Um, I had casually played through Captain Toad once, and I thought, oh, that would be fun to learn. And here I am. I'm still speedrunning it. It is uh, one of my favorite speedruns in the world. Um, but I also like it because it's kind of... How do I explain this? Captain Toad and Toadette are actually potentially villains. At the very least, they're anti-heroes. So it's... Uh, um, you know, kind of fun to, you know, play the bad boy or the bad girl. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's super, super fun to, to be able to speed run it. So, um, we were just talking earlier about what we think Toad would do. 
if Toad had a wish on the Triforce. And I think that Toad would wish for a pile of gold a mile high and to be no thoughts head empty all the time sitting on his pile of gold. And um, I I don't I haven't really seen any other hypotheses that uh, that would it dissuade me from that. I only finally finished getting 100% in that game last night, so I don't know that I'm the most lore expert, but I can't disagree with that assessment. <laughs> most of yeah. the game celebrates there being giant piles of cash. Char, did you finally beat Mummy Me Maze Forever? I did, and then I got the DLC and had to beat it a second time, but this time there's three toads and they all die instantly, and oh my goodness, why is that in the game? <laughs> But yes. I, I I don't know. I, I don't know. But yeah, that, that is a big accomplishment. So um, claps and chat for Charbunny for completing that extremely difficult uh, bonus level. And yeah, the special episode is really fun. It, it takes a bit of a different tack than uh, the main game. You're collecting a lot more kind of like crowns and things like that, little miniature items, but it's it's still really fun. It is, and it was actually the game of the month um, for December and January for the Frame Fatals group, which is why I really got into playing it. So that was super duper fun, and I think it'll be fun for the group to see it on the, the big stage on the GDQ channel coming up in a couple weeks. Oh, absolutely, so, yeah. Of game of the month, there was just a few changes made to it, and I, first of all, I love them because it makes it so much easier to find resources, but also, like, game of the month has been going on for, what, a year or two at this point? A um, couple of years, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I know the first game I believe was Pokemon Snap, and it's gotten me to like, even if I'm not speedrunning the games, I do like, get to pick them up and have an excuse to play them. So it's really nice, I love Game of the Month. <laughs> yeah, yeah game, of, game of the Month has been super fun for me too. I got into uh, Link's Awakening speedrunning as a result of Game of the Month, uh, which I am still doing uh, runs of that on my channel, which uh, I, I am also enjoying, but... There's just such a fun community in um, both Frame Fatals and Lady Arcader. So, um, if there's any women or, or female identifying uh, viewers right now who aren't members of either community, we would love to have you join. We love making new friends and welcoming new women into our circle. It is it is so fun. Um, so yeah, we definitely hope that you'll join us. And now that you mentioned Zelda too, I know there's uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past randomizer as a bonus game on the schedule. That would be on Thursday. And then I think on day one, so the same day as Luigi's Mansion, of course, the very famous Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, we actually have a Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD run that will be coming on. So that'll be Sunday, February 26th on the Game Zone Quick channel. Super duper excited. So maybe that's when this will be offered a surprise. I don't know for sure, but I'm definitely keeping my eye out for this one. These triangles are looking so cool. It looks like the center one is really coming together now. Yeah. Uh, it just took me a second to get my footing. I, you know, a lot of us have never done crafts on stream, so this was a really interesting uh, experiment in learning how to translate something that you're used to doing from like the comfort of your own home to... I'm actually going to take a second and double check that these angles are correct on these because it feels like they are not. And so I'm going to do that by... I want to make sure this is on screen. This template is an equilateral triangle, so I know that it's correct, and it looks like this one is actually off at some point. So I'm going to run my ruler down that way, and I'm going to flip it this way. We've had a surprising amount of math today on stream for the crafting stream. I know we got equilateral triangles now, we were counting stitches before this. It's been interesting. There's so much math that goes into crafting. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows. It's so... Uh, I do math during my day job too and I cannot escape it. <laughs> can't run, can't hide. No, not at all. Alright, uh, that one looks fine. Let me just go ahead and... even out these sides because they are starting to get frayed and I do not like that. I don't know how much you can see. I keep scooting further down because I'm used to cutting sanding up actually. Um, the, the traditional wisdom is you cut with your, your body and not your arm so you don't cause any sort of 
uh, strain or like repetitive stress in injury, oh, okay. um, which is something that a lot of crafters get actually. Um, I know I used to get them when I did a lot of knitting. I'm not gonna do that without any sort of guide. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> We were, I think, earlier on stream, maybe during one of the first few showcases, um, compression gloves or like crafting gloves came up. And that's something that I know I've used for knitting, but I've also used for gaming because it's that same thing. We're using your hand in the same way over and over and over. It's a good idea to make sure you're taking care of it. Yeah. Um, since I've cut that one down in size now, it's actually a different size from this one. And I didn't realize how big of a difference it was until just now. Um, so I'm actually going to remeasure these. So this is, let's see, this is a 12 by 24 mat, um, flipped on its side. Um, so I'm gonna pull that off camera to make this easier real quick. This is seven inches and it should be seven inches by seven inches by seven inches. Okay. So these need to come down to that same. I have so many scraps here. That's one thing we don't talk about is keeping your workstation clean. It is a constant struggle. I can definitely sympathize with that. I was doing jewelry the other day and just my entire table is covered in like small scraps of metal. It's like, please tell me they're not on the floor because I have bunnies and that's not what you want to have for bunnies. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I have, I actually have a cat that likes to watch me sew. Uh, she will sit um, on the other side of the sewing machine and like stare at the thread as it's fed through the uh, various loops and oh, things uh, and try to eat it. <laughs> so she's not oh, allowed in here while I'm sewing. Yeah, good call for some supervision on that one. <laughs> Let's see. You know, I I just want to jump in. This is a little bit uh, apropos of nothing, but we were talking, um, Char, about your Phoenix Wright cosplay tent. Um, I yes. actually would love to see a Phoenix Wright speedrun in uh, uh, Frame Fatales someday, or, you know, Lady Arcader's Super Showcase. Um, the speedrun itself is two to two and a half hours, so I, I think it'd be really fun to to see. I think it is a lot of text mashing, but world record is an R49. Maybe we could have this as a Fatalis game of the month sometime this year. That would be cool. Definitely thought about trying a Phoenix Wright speedrun, but it does it's seem so like it would be game. mostly text messaging. It's like entirely a menuing based game. So there's a lot of that that I think would be going on, but I haven't actually looked into it that seriously. So I couldn't, couldn't tell you for sure. We'll see. We'll see. But, you know, Phoenix Wright is so popular. Everyone loves Phoenix Wright. Everybody so. does love Phoenix Wright, except for everybody in the Phoenix Wright universe. <laughs> You're not wrong. That is extremely true, and that actually makes me sad now. I'm going to go and, and think about my life choices now. I'm so What's sorry. Okay? No, I, 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 I'm okay. Don't worry. My, uh, gumshoe. my brother was Gumshoe for this, so we went together. I was the Blue Badger who was Gumshoe. And Gumshoe's just such a character. Like, oh, his music always makes me tear up a little bit. Gumshoe is probably the best character ever. He just constantly, <laughs> like, he puts up with so much stuff and still, like, manages to, like, try and give everybody a smile at the end of the day, which is, like... I know. It's so good. I appreciate that. I don't know if everybody does, but it's nice. I like characters like that. Right. But, but yeah, um, if you are interested in showing stuff off, like crafting wise at a Lady Arcaders showcase, you can go ahead and submit. We still have a few showcase options uh, or not showcase slots open for, I believe, March. So go ahead Me and like... Too contact us and and we can get that together you have to join the discord uh but we'd be happy to help you get everything set up uh we have a great tech team that does a lot of work to make sure everything works and um everybody is where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be uh yeah yeah, if you're interested in submitting for one of the showcases, there's a link in the panels below the stream, or you can go to ladyarcaders.com and there's links to submit there. 
And as you can see, it's not just stuff where you have to be playing the video game or speedrunning the video game, it is anything video game or video game adjacent. So crafting showcases like this, speedruns, challenge attempts, like all of those are welcome. Submit whatever sounds good to you, we'd love to take a look. Yeah, actually, that's a really good reminder. I've been meaning to submit a showcase of Mini Metro for a while, so um, I uh, I will definitely be doing that this week. Oh, wish you good luck. I'm excited too because I see that we now have yellow and blue <laughs> triangles starting to Together, become adjacent. Yeah. Which, oh heck yeah! We it's like so that. I'm so excited. All right, so. We now have this together, and now here's the complicated part, because I need this to line up with that side, and I need this to line up with this side, which means more cutting. But this ruler is not long enough for that, which means I have to step away for two seconds. I'll be right back. Okay. Chat, don't panic while it's gone. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Look at the beautiful sewing machine. It has a light Hi, on it. Hi, chat. I'm back. I, oh, Welcome man. I, I was, I was about to start. Are you guys okay? I know it was scary without me. I was I about to start panicking. It, it's okay. I'm here. Um, I'm actually yeah. going to leave this for now. Uh, I will, however, flip it. This is a, I believe it's a 4x18 pinch ruler. It's very long, as you can see. Uh, Oh my goodness. That's nice though. Do you have to worry about leaving that seam allowance as you're cutting again this time or this one is just evening everything up? This is just evening everything up. I'm concerned because I think right here is a little, this part is a little thick, but we can deal with that because sewing machines can only sew through so much fabric and quilting cotton is not thin. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and snip that down. I will also snip this down. So that's laying a little flatter. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, that's a good configuration. I like it. Uh, let's see. And, all right. I'm actually gonna cheat this down a little bit because when I unfold it. Sewing, sewing angles is weird and I dislike it. Um, I try to avoid it whenever possible, but- So um, you need to try force Y? That's a great question. <laughs> I, so I made, I made this one and it came out really well and I was like, okay, yeah, I can do something a little bit more scrappy out of it. And then I was like, oh, I hand sewed this. I'm not hand sewing this. <laughs> Here we go. I'm, I'm really excited though. I think this is fantastic. All right, so there's a lot of seams here. I'm gonna just go a little bit slower and I'm going to move my hand away from that. As I finish getting that through the feed dogs, I will pull up. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So again, we're going to line this up about even, and we will chop that off. Again, you see how that went without me like having my hand there? That's because my foot rests on the pedal, which is why I have to be careful, because sometimes the sewing machine will go off. You do not want your hands there unprotected, uh, so don't put your hands in or near the needle. <laughs> <laughs> Good to keep in mind. Alright, so we just have this last seam and then we can start building up the sides. It was rough going there at first, but we got through it. It happens sometimes. <laughs> I, one of the cool things about this project so far is it starts with just this little tiny piece, right? This one little piece of scrap, and then it grows and it just so quickly starts to come together as you have these pieces ready to assemble. Yeah. It is. I I really appreciate that. It's really satisfying to see a project come together with quilting because you have so many tiny parts. Um, I, one of the most exhausting parts of a project whenever you start a new one is actually cutting everything because one of the recommendations is to just cut everything at the same time. Oh no, I think I need to pull my thread out and re-thread it. Um, let me see. Yeah. 
So one of the recommendations they make for new quilters is to just go ahead, this is a tip, cut your top thread from the top of your sewing machine and pull down because otherwise it'll mess with the tension of your machine. Um, but uh, they recommend new quilters cut everything first so you can make sure that you have enough fabric to finish the pattern that you're doing. Um, which is great because then if you need more fabric, you can go out and just grab it and then go back. But you're cutting the same piece, uh, maybe a hundred or two hundred of the same piece at one time, and it can get rather exhausting. Um, so this is another neat feature of this machine. I'm not close enough to my machine to thread it by hand without any assistance. So this is a, oh, you can't see it, but it's unfortunate. I actually have a, uh, threader on this where you push it down with one finger and you wrap your thread through a hole and like under something and it'll pull the thread through the needle for you. So you don't have to worry about getting up close or using a, like a separate like penny nickel threader. Um, let's see. What is causing that? I think it's the way this seam is laying. Um, in which case, this will be easier. And sometimes you do have to work within the limits of like what your machine or your materials can do. If I was sewing that by hand, I would have to use a thimble, um, which if you're hand sewing, I do recommend finding a thimble that fits your hand. Um, there are different sizes and it does matter because if you're not using a thimble that fits, it'll slide off easy. It'll put too much stress at one point of your hand or your finger. So yeah. Um, they can be kind of expensive, but if you have a local antique store or something, they might actually have the thimbles that were, like, designed for, like, certain sizes. Um, you can also buy them online. And this could is a you, really big... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Pappy. Uh, I was just going to ask, would you ever consider naming a child a thimble? No. <laughs> I wouldn't either, but you know, I I just wanted to ask. Was it wasn't the way sure. I'm saying it? No, not at all. I I just have a unique brain that thinks things like, I wonder if my friends would name their child Thimble ever. And I know that the answer is no, but I still gotta ask. That is you know what? Sometimes you do. Sometimes you just have to ask and it's okay. And now we're at the part where we are even evening things out. We have done all of the inward sewing and that is set. I'm not making any changes to that. Um, <laughs> but our go. edges, our edges don't look great. You see this here? That does not line up with this edge here. That's fine. We're going to fix that as much as we can. This is why triangles are difficult um, because you have to worry about your nice points and sometimes you lose them. It hurts. It hurts my soul to lose them. But it happens. I assume that squares are the most common shape, or is there an alternate one that's better than triangles? Uh, it's mostly squares. Anything with uh, 90 degree angles is super easy to quilt because it's just two straight lines. You don't have to do any math about uh, where your angles line up. Um, that, of course, is not always the case. Uh, if you're using, for example, a bento box pattern, which showed you this. Let me show you this. Uh, I actually have a sketchbook that is mostly quilting things. Uh, so let me pull this out. Uh, this is not a bento box. This is a square of uh, four, four corner square. No, this is a nine square uh, with a large center. Uh, so the sides are actually large rectangles and then each corner is a smaller square and the center is a larger square. So sometimes you do have to do some math about how long your rectangles <laughs> need to be versus your squares, uh, all to fit in like a larger square. Um, it, honestly, if you want a heavy math uh, hobby, quilting's for you. <laughs> <laughs> also just really satisfying to see it even out so quickly with this pizza cutter thing. Like, that tool I am so jealous of compared to trying to cut in a straight line with scissors. 
yeah, no, cutting with a straight line in, or cutting a straight line with scissors is so difficult. And the good thing about this one is since it is a 60 millimeter cutter, it can actually cut through about uh, five or six pieces of fabric. So if you're cutting something multiple times, you can actually fold the fabric on top of each other, on top of itself and cut and get several pieces at once. Um, this is my new one. It is, I think, 45. It's only supposed to cut through like two or three at a time. Um, but this is for like smaller shapes, so you aren't cutting your fabric too much and you aren't wasting fabric. And I say wasting as in fabric going into the scrap bag versus fabric going on a quilt. <laughs> I just like that there's speed tech for this. You can cut multiple fabric at once. Yeah. I mean, if you give humans a way, they will give humans enough time, they will figure out a way to do things more efficiently. So here we are. Um, I think, I'm trying to decide which way I like the best. I think I like it like this the best. Um, it looks a little off on the camera, but I think that's the way the camera's sitting. It does look like maybe this side is a little longer, but that's okay. It's handmade. It's not going to be perfect. My biggest advice I can give anybody who is crafting or just starting out is don't worry about it being perfect. Sometimes you just need to get it done. And even if it's not perfect, the fact that it's handmade will make a lot of people like appreciate it. <laughs> because I, I think I said this during JPEG stream, so much work goes into this from picking out your materials to buying them to uh, like just the prep work of it, which for JPEG was making a stencil on a piece of paper and filling it out. And uh, for maybe me, it's uh, like hours of math. <laughs> maybe for, for uh, Eli Eliza, uh, it's, it's, picking out which pattern to use and for for three it's probably just a lot of counting <laughs> or maybe finding another pattern because i do know there are patterns for um crocheting dolls and stuff so like just so much work goes with... i'm sorry i don't know what my voice went did there so much work goes into like handmade things it's really hard to like not appreciate it so I'm lifting up my foot there because the seam has been sewed that way and the foot pedal will actually push it up. If I don't lift the pedal there, it'll make make it so the fabric doesn't like f sit flat. That's another reason you really want to uh, go ahead and iron your thing, your iron your stuff so your seams are sitting flat. Uh, and you don't have to worry about doing that every time you run up against a a seam that's not flat or lying against where you're sewing. Alright. And so I actually originally thought I was going to make this square, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to make it not triangular, but I think it's going to be a funky shape. We'll see. <laughs> I'll say, when you said not square, I'm expecting triangle, and then you threw the curveball out there of not triangle either, and now I don't know what to expect. Listen, I'm tired of triangles, okay? <laughs> <laughs> They've hurt me too much, all right? This has been, this has been a lot of work. Triangles are not my friends. <laughs> triangles are definitely tricky, but it's looking fantastic. I am so excited about this. Yeah, this is this is super fun and honestly these strats are unreal just so <laughs> impressive the technique here i appreciate the commentary and the style of a speedrunner i would expect nothing less this this is definitely a powerful team of women right now <laughs> that i am happy to be a part of also critique do you think now's a good time to talk about the hamsters oh the hamsters that power sewing machines of course Exactly. Would you like me to explain them to chat? Yeah, of course. Tell us about how the first sewing machine was invented. <laughs> Wonderful. I would be more than happy to. So, in the year 1820, the first sewing machine was invented by Eleftherius Singer. And this sewing machine was powered by 500 hamsters. Prior to this time, hamsters were only found in the wild in the English county of Dorsetshire. However, 
Stinger was able to domesticate millions of these animals for use in his machines. But modern sewing machines only are powered by five hamsters, which means that is a 99%, here's a little math for you, a 99% reduction in the use of hamsters. Now that's what we call environmental conservation. And uh, so yeah, you don't see it, but there are five hamsters in a uh, critique sewing machine right now. They are very small. Uh, I feed them with lint. <laughs> Don't feed your hamsters lint. That's not good for them. Only laundry and sewing hamsters can eat lint. Regular hamsters cannot eat lint. I'm so sorry, don't... there's laundry hamsters now too? I'm, tr I'm trying to keep up on this. This is all new for me here. There, there are. Back in the year 1633, um, the first washing machine was invented by a woman named... Brunhilde Bartholomew, and she used also a lot of hamsters. 436 hamsters. Yep, that's the one. And yep, that's definitely where sewing machines and laundry machines got their start. It's impressive you... to see how far we've come, down to only five hamsters. It, it really is. And washing machines only use one mega hamster. So when you hear the the you know actuator in the um, the washing machine moving back and forth, that's actually the strong arms of a mega hamster that are are moving it. So just just be grateful to animals that are so small you can't even see them, but they're definitely there. See this. It feels like that doesn't make sense, but then I think about the fact that my socks go missing when I do laundry, and it makes more sense if there's a hamster that likes footwear, that maybe the hamster is taking the socks? Like, is that part of this as well, or is that a separate issue? The the hamster in the dryer will occasionally take a sock as, as their reward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And then oh, it will wear okay, the sock. Okay. Just like we wear clothing of every color and and fabric type, then so does the hamster. I really so hope my hamster it. likes Mario socks. That's what I oh have. No! How many Mario socks have you lost? I don't know that I've lost too many yet, but I definitely have more Mario socks than non-Mario socks because I keep going to Target and going, oh, I'm out shopping and being an adult. I deserve a treat. And going to the <laughs> Nintendo Party store and they have Mario socks. So it's like, oh, socks are a good utilitarian thing to buy. That's not a waste of my money like a plushie would be, even though I also get plushies. So I buy the socks thinking that that's a more responsible decision for my <laughs> impromptu Target purchase. And now I have kind of too many Mario socks. I, oh I'm just gosh. imagining you. I'm imagining you, Char, with like this drawer full of socks with Mario and Yoshi and Peach and Wario on them. Honestly, this totally <laughs> tracks with my um, my understanding of your personality. They're pretty um, cute too. Like, there's a piranha plant one that just says "bite me." <laughs> oh, that is cute. I know. That is adorable. I like that. Something got tangled. Oh no. What's the hamsters? Hamsters, not that, not thread. I guess I haven't been giving them enough lint. This also explains why your cat is so interested in the sewing machine. Uh, I yeah. think there's hamsters, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh lord. Oh no, what's wrong? Oh, just I'm just laughing at how how silly we are. Incredibly silly. The silliest group of gamers. I know. Pretty much. Pretty much. If if we ever have like an in-person uh, Fatales marathon, then we'll definitely need to get together and just wear the most silly socks and clothes that we can think of because we are the silliest women in gaming. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, we are still building up the shape, but I don't know if this is enough. Like, this feels like a lot, but I don't know. So, I'm gonna go ahead and use up as much of this as I can, and we'll see. So is the plan to just keep putting that in a border around it, or what are we using it for at this point? We're still using it as a border around it. I'm hoping the more I build it up, the more it'll look solid, as opposed to just kind of like, 
I guess right now it looks like it just kind of blends together and it might be because you see there's blue here, there's blue here, and there's blue in the border itself. We'll see. We'll keep going. Uh, I'm trying to leave at least an inch seam allowance just for safety at this point. <laughs> um, just in case, you know. And again, like this is another point that would be a great idea to just stop and get an iron out, but I do not have space for that now. Um, it is an unfortunate reality of streaming that uh, you can't fit everything you want to on the, the <laughs> webcam. And I don't have space for, for an iron up here. Uh, usually I would take a break after getting to this point because sitting down for long periods of time uh, isn't great for you and breaks are always nice and appreciated and good for you. Um, so I would take a break and I'd probably go get something to eat. I'd get the, the ironing board out, let the iron heat up, and then I would go ahead and add uh, iron this and probably put everything up for the day and then come back. Um, just to make sure that I didn't get too burnt out on a project because I'm sure like every crafter, I have about 10,000 projects sitting around unfinished. Um. <laughs> I can sympathize. Yeah, we've been here for about, I think, hour nine, hour 10 minutes. Definitely a good long session. So anyone watching, like, don't forget to stay hydrated. You can stand up, stretch. It's okay. You know, always happy to make sure people are taking care of themselves. And I do think that that's something that, like, again, with the the compression uh, wrist uh, supports and stuff is, is very important because a lot of these crafts are, like, just repeated motion. And so it can get really uh, easy to just fall into a habit of doing something over and over again and not taking care of yourself. So, as always, take care of yourself. Make sure you get some water. Stretch. And chill out we have some lovely music going on in the background and we still have some more time for some crafts so we'll see how far we can get <laughs> i know the music today has just been so cozy like there's so many good video game songs does anyone have like a favorite video game song that just stands out to them as one that they'll always remember i mean the snake eater three or the metal gear solid three song right mm. that one's like famous but i think I've been singing uh, the Fire Emblem Three Houses song, uh, theme song a lot lately. Oh, nice. That's fun. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, of one. You know, the first one that popped into my head was, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the Hyrule Field theme from Ocarina of Time. That's the first song that popped in my mind as one that I will never forget. As, as a... <laughs> Oh, how old was I when I first played that? I think I was 10. I was, I was a 10 year old girl. And just the um, the sheer sense of wonder and adventure that I felt when I first heard that, it was so exciting. It was it was nothing like my soul had ever felt before. I was, I was just blown away. Um, so so that's gonna be one that'll be with me forever. That's definitely an iconic one. I think part of it too with video games is that they often will pair the songs with some of those moments, right? When you see the field and everything just opens up. It's, you get this extra emotion from it. Mine, I think, is um, the music for Temporal Tower in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, like when you're oh, going to yeah. fight Bialga. Oh my goodness, that one every time makes me emotional, just because I feel like it's so powerful. And again, when you pair it with that moment in the game and what's happening in the story, it just gets even better. It was so great. And I haven't been keeping an eye on chat, but if chat has some good suggestions or good listening recommendations, I'll take it. I'm always looking for more music options. We definitely have some, some music in chat. I know Xanarkand is something that Dragoran is shouting out. We also have Metroid Crime talking about the Pursuit Cornered music from Phoenix Wright. So yeah. Plenty of, plenty of great music. That Phoenix Wright songs are great. I think those are underrated. I like I had an iPod for a long time. It eventually broke, but I wanted to still listen to music. And so what I do is I take my DS with me to work 
and I would just put on the Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright game, and it had a sound test, and so I could listen to all the Phoenix Wright music just oh. by awkwardly having a 3DS in my filing cabinet and then just a wire coming out of that, <laughs> hoping no one would ask me any questions. Friendly reminder for those of you who still have a working 3DS and uh, want to get some games, that store is closing soon. So if you would like to have some classics like Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, get them from the, the 3DS store before it closes because uh, that will go up in price very soon, just like physically, and it'll be harder to find. Absolutely. Yeah, if you ever want to speedrun Super Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS, which definitely not just name dropping a game that I really like speedrunning, it's a good idea to get it now. The digital version's faster, so it's fine. <laughs> we also have shout outs for the, the lab music from VVVVVV and the park from Illbleed from Abby's Corner. Ah, yes. Illbleed. <laughs> oh, what a fun game that one is. I think that one's kind of underappreciated. It is a fantastic game. I we, t oh, we were talking earlier about games that you liked to watch but didn't play, and I this horror games are the one for me that just I cannot play them. They are too scary. I do not have a strong enough heart for this, but I love watching them. And Oblivion is just such an adventure when you watch it. So I, yeah, definitely a highlight for me. It goes places constantly, right? <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna shout out a couple other jams that I particularly enjoy. Both of them from Yakuza Zero. Now, the first Ooh. one, everyone knows which one I'm gonna say. Of course, it's Friday Night. <laughs> everyone loves Friday Night. I, I am starting the tradition of dancing to that every Friday night. Um, but there's another one that's a knockoff of uh, Bad by Michael Jackson. It's called I'm Gonna Make Her Mine, and it's another disco song that you can dance to. Oh my god, it is an incredible bop, like, beyond anything that you can imagine. So I I was uh, dancing to that last night as well. I've been dancing a lot lately. It's, it's kind of par for the course with me, but um, yeah, Yakuza Zero has a banger soundtrack that is so good. I, I can't wait to play Kiwami. I just started getting into Yakuza, and it is easily one of the best things I've ever chosen to do in my gaming career. <laughs> gaming That's career. Awesome. Looks like we're getting more of this border closed in, too. Yeah. Looking, um, looking excitedly. Yeah, it's honestly, it's much bigger than I thought it was going to be. I don't know if it'll even fit on the screen completely. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do a triangle, but I think we're getting to the <laughs> point where I'm, I'm comfortable with how large this is. Um, the big issue is how stiff it's going to be and how to hang it, because if I hang it as a triangle, it's going to uh, not have a lot of support. So just to give like mm, I see. some context, I, I do want to have this as a hanging and make like a loop out of either this or something else. Um, and just trying to think of like how stiff it'll be if um, the person uses it, if whoever is lucky enough to win this, if this does make it <laughs> on time to Frost Fatales, um, how stiff this will be and what the person wants to use it for. I think that I'm happy with the border. I'm happy with how this looks. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut off all the excess and um, I'm not gonna trim these sides because I do want a little bit extra space uh, for sewing it onto the backing and the binding, which is another part of the quilt I haven't even started talking about yet. <laughs> There's so much that goes into quilt making. Um, for those of you who do not know, a quilt consists of three layers, the first of which is the quilt top, which would be this. Um, the backing, which is usually just a sheet of plain fabric um, that goes on the underside. And in between the two, there is a piece of cotton or um, po not polyester, the, the plastic version of the filling uh, batting. Uh, and that is sandwiched in between the two of them. It's kind of thin. Uh, you can get thicker versions. Typically, if you're using cotton, your quilt is going to shrink. Um, and you want to make sure you're also using quilting cotton, like fully quilting cotton. Um, so that it shrinks as well along with cotton thread um 
but uh, I'm actually positive that everything in this is quilting cotton, so it doesn't really matter what I use. And this is also a wall hanging, so it probably won't get washed very much. Um, but depending on what type of batting you use and how thickly you quilt the fabric and the batting and the binding together depends on how like firm it is. Um, frankly, I don't think I would want to quilt this very thick because it's already a very busy pattern. Um, it's actually really interesting because looking at the preview, it doesn't look nearly as busy as it does in person. It looks like much more subdued. Um, but like this is like a glittery brown, like a very dark glittery brown. Um, and this actually has like a floral pattern on it. So like there's more to it looks more busy in person. So I don't want to make it too, too busy. Um, and I actually have some black thread for quilting. So um, I probably will end up just going over various, uh, it's called quilting, uh, stitching in the ditch, uh, and quilting. Um, but how much time do we have left? We're definitely getting closer to time, probably about 10 minutes-ish. Great. That Maybe is... closer to 12 minutes. I Ooh. have bonus two minutes. <laughs> oh, bonus two minutes. How lucky am I? Um, Bonus two minutes. We've got extra time. What do they call it in soccer? Um, is it extra time? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, I don't well. know. I'm thinking overtime, but I think that's the American football. That's the American that's a, football. That's a, <laughs> American, American football. But we can go with that. We're in overtime. Oh, we are in. We're in overtime already. Uh, no, we still well, have ten minutes of regular play. Okay. Then, okay. Two minutes of overtime. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Let me even these out real quick. And then I will have to step away again. Chat, don't get too scared without me. I know it is scary. Um, sewing machine scary. Quilting scary. Math scary. I'll be right back. Oh, gosh. Happy Bear, you still there. You haven't abandoned me, right? I have not abandoned you. Okay, I'm right okay. here with you, Char. Now need to panic. I'm virtually we'll holding this. your hand right now, please. Yes, my I'm holding your hand virtually. Um, Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know it was real scary without me, but I'm back and I have uh. a treat if I can get it open. It doesn't seem to want to open. It looks like a big bag of cotton candy. <laughs> um, <laughs> But this oh, now I want a big bag of cotton candy. Oh god, a big bag of cotton candy sounds so good, doesn't it? Especially since I have to go to work tomorrow and a big bag of cotton candy just sounds nice. Uh, so this is actually some batting. Um, and we are going to cut it to size. Uh, we are also going to cut this to size, which means we are done with sewing machine for now. Goodbye, sewing machine. Thank you for your help. We appreciate it. Bless you, hamsters, for your service. May you have all the lint that you desire. Yeah. Um, so actually with um, this, I'm going to cut it too big. Uh, and there's several reasons for that. The first of which is because while you're quilting, it kind of like gets pulled in a little bit, but also because it's gonna be hard to do this without having some extras. And I can always trim it down to size later. So we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna lay that out. So that's a little bit extra. And I'm just gonna use scissors for this. Typically I would use uh, my rotary cutter on a larger cutting mat, but again, limited space. So I'm gonna cut some extra off to the side. We're gonna turn our scissors and we're gonna cut as straight of a line as we can. It doesn't really matter because you are going to lose some batting when you go back and cut it off. While we're doing this, is there another quilting project you've done in the past that you're you're really proud of? Maybe you want to tell everyone about. Uh, I, I mentioned the the gift for my brother. Uh, that was that was something. It took me again November until. Uh, August of the next year, but um, I think probably probably my first quilt, which technically is not finished yet. I actually have to go back and rip out some seams and re-quilt it because I've just learned so much since uh, doing that that I have so much more knowledge and I feel like I could make it look so much better <laughs> than it looks now. <laughs> 
All right. I know. So we have some options for quilting backing, and I will let everybody else decide. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but we have the star. We have this gold. And I'm going to say, I'm not going to say this one because it has skulls on it, and I don't want skulls to be too prominent. So which I thought my option was just or the plain? plain black. I, I didn't realize we could do fancy backings. This is kind can. of exciting. I have I have a quilt off to the side that has uh, blue roses on the backing. Oh, that's so cool. Happy Bear, what are your thoughts on what the back should be? Oh boy, that is a really, really good question. I mean, the Triforce is golden, um, these are but stars. it also... And these um, are these, if that changes your mind at all. Yeah, you know, I, I'm in a star mood recently, as as we learned from Tech Jack earlier, so um, I'm, my vote is for the stars. Alright, so stars it is. Char? I'm just happy to be here. Char, you can just need to vote. <laughs> that sounds an awful lot like having to make decisions, and I was not brought um, in here to make decisions. I was here right, to tell everyone sorry. that you too can be on Lady Arcaders by submitting a form with a speedrunning or gaming related uh, event or showcase. You could go to the website. That's my job, is to say those words. I got Char, this. Char, I was about to say, we need you to use your executive function, and then I realized I am a huge hypocrite for even thinking that. So, <laughs> I think anything you want to do is fantastic by me. I mean, I think either could work, because my logic on this is that leaves kind of is where you would generally find, like, the Master Sword, right? You're going through these foresty explorations. You're not usually up in the sky. But when the new Breath of the Wild releases, that seems very sky themed. So, having stars for it might end up being a big brain move to sort of get ahead of that trend. So, I think either of them would work great. This piece looks fantastic, and I'm. I'm really excited. I think it's going to be such a wonderful thing to be able to share. So congrats. We have made a quilt sandwich. Yay! I technically need to base this, which is the process of either using pins or glue. I typically use pins because I don't want to bother with glue. I have cats. They will get that everywhere. Uh, where you connect the three of them by pinning them or gluing them or whatever. People have like spray based. Um, and then that is your quilt sandwich. You can move it around without having uh, to worry about pieces moving around or um, you losing a piece or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, so my next steps in the process would be quilting this, which is the actual process of sewing on the design. So if you ever look at a quilt, um, it has stitches on top of the like fabric. And you might be wondering why that is. Well, if you remember at the start of this, I mentioned we don't use back stitches on any of our seams. Um, quilting it reinforces the, the middle of the seam and the various like seams, so you don't have to worry about it coming apart towards the edges. Uh, you also have sewn several times over the seam, so you don't really need to worry about that, but still. Um, it's also decorative. Um, oftentimes you really don't need to worry about that because um, sewing machines and the fabric and the the like density of fabric and the density of the thread you're using, you don't need to worry about it coming apart, but it it helps. Um, it's decorative, you can do all sorts of different patterns, and there's different ways to do it. Um, right now, if you see me grabbing like various pieces of string and cutting, it's from where um, pieces of string have made it through the seams, um, and I'm trying to clean it up. Um, but yeah, there's different methods of quilting. You can hand quilt. In which case you would make each stitch by hand. You probably would put the quilt sandwich in an embroidery hoop um, and do it by that. Um, let me see, what else? There's also free motion quilting, in which case you need a special foot for your sewing machine. You would replace this walking foot with something else. Um, it's, it's actually spring <laughs> loaded. Um, and the spring goes on the uh, needle uh, holder and it lifts up the foot as you're sewing so you can move the fabric around and create designs. Um, they're also used for embroidery too. Uh, let me see what else. And then you can just like straight stitch it. If you don't know what you're doing, 
you don't have an idea in mind, stitching in a ditch, which is where you're stitching down the seams, is completely fine. It's a good way to emphasize the shapes that you've made. If you're doing triangles, it's really impressive. You can show off all your nice points. Um, but yeah. Yay! I love how much we get to learn today about all these different cool crafting processes. Yeah, it's great. I knew nothing about rhinestoning this morning, and now I know quite a lot. Right? That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I've certainly learned a lot as well. Um, and actually, I've left extra backing here. I haven't cut this off because oftentimes um, what I will do is I will just use the backing as the binding. I've mentioned that word a few times. Uh, this will probably be the last time I mention it. But uh, the binding is if you ever look at a quilt, you'll have the quilt top, which is all of the like pieces put together. Um, and then you'll have like some fabric along the side that is solid. Um, and that's the thing that like hides this. Like I could quilt over this and say it's done, but you need to fold the binding over. Um, and I'm trying to think of a good way to like describe it. It's kind of hard to. Um, usually you take two and a half inch fabric um, and you fold it so that the raw edges are towards the middle and then you fold it again. So you create this like, there's no raw edges here, if that makes sense. Um, and that's just a nice way to finish fa finish a quilt so you don't have to worry about like it fraying and uh, stitches coming undone and having to mend it. Because honestly, if you're creating something and you do it, your stitches are fine, you've quilted over it, um, and then you use a binding technique like that, the quilt should be fine and not need ending any mending for several years. That's awesome. I will also say we are starting to come up on time. So I don't know if there's something else you're planning on attempting for this or that we're going to leave it in the sandwich state and then everyone has to tune in for Frost Hotels on the 26th to maybe see the finished product. Uh, I will go ahead and cut this down. Um, but yeah, tune in to uh, Frost Metals and maybe you'll see this there. Uh, there's still a process to get it done uh, and they're in time, but I really hope I manage to do it because uh, I've been meaning to submit an event or prize to an event for a very long time. And I think this is the first time that I've actually managed to do it, <laughs> to get close. <laughs> um, and it feels really silly because like, I used to say that about volunteering. Um, for, so for those of you who don't know, I volunteered for, for Frost and Flame and last year's Frost. Uh, and I, it had been a journey. I joined Frost, uh, I joined Fatals uh, maybe the first year that they had the, the Discord up. And I had kept saying I wanted to volunteer and then I finally got around to it last year. And uh, since then I've been volunteering uh, with other speedruns and stuff. So yeah, if you want to volunteer and you haven't yet, you really should. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, it's sometimes stressful, um, but yeah, uh, this, this is going to happen, I think. <laughs> I believe in you. Would you like to do any final shout outs where people can find you? Uh, yeah, of course. If anybody wants to find me, I am on Twitch as Critique Quartz. And if anybody wants to follow my YouTube, that is also, uh, at, uh Critique Quartz. And then if anybody wants to follow my Twitch, it is also Critique Quartz. Um, so very easy to find me, hopefully. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope I helped you learn something. <laughs> Definitely learned a lot. Happy Bear, same to you. Would you like to say any parting words? I would, as a matter of fact. I have 4,000 parting words. I'm just kidding. Um, so I uh, also stream on Twitch, uh, Happy Bear Lives. It looks like we just got the shout out, so thank you, Crime. Um, I have a YouTube channel as well where I um, do speedrun documentaries, kind of uh, summoning saltish in style. Um, but I like uh, kind of reviewing some of the lesser known speedruns. It's really fun. Um, and yeah, I think those are my only two public uh, social media accounts. So yeah, I would love to um, see you come hang out on the Twitch channel. We're doing Link's Awakening speedruns. We're doing uh, a Metroid Prime, uh, excuse me, Metroid Prime, damn it. Uh, Metroid Prime uh, uh, playthrough uh, right now. And uh, uh, it's it's really fun. So yeah, we'd love to love to see you there. But thanks, Critique, for um, uh, choosing me to be your commentator, and thanks, Charbunny, for being an amazing host. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. I will also say, if you haven't yet, if you would like to join Lady Arcaders, we have a pu public Discord, which anybody can join, and we have a private Discord that is only open to women. Um, please join. I am lead moderator, and there is a lot of work that goes into all of the stuff we do. Um, we have tech checks, we have so much effort that goes into just the showcases every week, um, not to mention all of the back-end stuff, which is the tech of setting up the OBSs and everything. It's a lot of work, and I'm so glad that people appreciate it, but uh, yeah, if you want to join us, we'd love to have you. We absolutely would. Thank you again so much, Critique, for this incredible showcase, this incredible piece of art that we got to witness being made. Um, and everyone, please stick around. We'll have a few more messages and then we'll head out for the night. But thank you one more time. Appreciate Bye. it. All right. Well, that does bring us to the end of our showcase today. Thank you, everyone who watched from the beginning, who joined in partway, seeing all of these wonderful crafts being made so that they could be submitted again as prizes for that upcoming Frost Vitalis Showcase. That is a week-long marathon starting February 26th, running through March 4th on the Games Done Quick channel. For this, for Lady Arcaders, this group, as you just heard, you can join the public server. It's open to anyone. And if you'd like to join our private server, because you're a woman, you'd like to be more involved behind the scenes or just talk to other women about awesome gaming things, please feel free to join us in. There also are spots open for the attract mode for March, meaning that if you have an idea for a showcase, a challenge run, a speed run of anything gaming or gaming adjacent, you can go ahead and submit that on the website at ladyarcaders.com or using the links below the stream. We're also looking for volunteer help with tech, so things like restreaming, tech checking, and social media or media, sorry, things like video editors and clip takers. If you're interested in watching more, you can see the schedule upcoming on your screen. Our next showcase is going to be Sonic Colors with Dream Tora. That's going to be February 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern, at 6 p.m. Pacific. And then later on, we'll also have Valkyria Chronicles with Alexisco's Moo. That'll be February 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern, and that's 11 a.m. Pacific. For now, though, we're going to be sticking around for a raid. Thank you again so much for joining us, and we hope to see you again in the future. Have a great rest of your weekend.